This week, we'll be reviewing the essential characteristics that make a design truly minimalistic and some cool practical tricks for building minimalist sites with Elementor. Minimalist designs for websites aren't just fashionable, they are practical, they are fast loading, they are very clear and very easy to navigate, potentially making them great for user experience. Now, it's important to understand what minimalism or minimalist design is. Creating a site in a monochromatic color scheme or building a page with lots of negative space doesn't necessarily mean that our end result is a minimalist design. We've covered the ideals of minimalism in the in-depth article that was published with this video, and you can find links to that and more in the show notes below. But for now, let's try to understand what minimalism design means. Renaissance artist Michelangelo is said to have explained that the way he created sculptures was to clear away every little piece of the marble block to expose the statue hidden deep within. Now, in a nutshell, minimalism takes this idea several levels further and presents designs that have been stripped down to its most basic essentials to reveal its content perfectly distilled and clear to the viewer. Now, minimalism can be found in every form of art and design, in architecture, literature, even in music. It continuously pushes the limit, trying to find the absolute minimum content that we need to convey a clear, concise message, while disregarding anything that could possibly detract or distract from it. Now, to achieve this in web design, web creators prefer to use fine, delicate lines, short, astute text, hidden content accessible by clicking on abstract icons, subtle nuances and motifs that are barely noticeable. Now, of course, as web creators, we also need to find a way to balance the design plan with the content that our client wants us to showcase. Something that is true regardless of the type of style that we're using, but obviously more so if that style is minimalism. Now, throughout this masterclass, we like to use this website as an example of a practical minimalist design. It's a site that has appeared in one of our showcases, and it was designed for the Swedish web studio Webnord. And as you can see, it lives up to that wonderfully good old Scandinavian reputation for minimalism. The following is a list of common characteristics that are a direct result of putting minimalist ideology into practical design. The first thing that we notice once we've stripped a site bare is the vast empty space that surrounds a graphic element, or what professionals call negative space, so-called because it is the opposite of the space taken up by real objects. Now, as we can see in our example site, having so much of it creates a confident, relaxing feeling, like a quiet breath of fresh air. In minimalist design, the main purpose of negative space is to keep the viewer focused on a specific point, but being void of distractions, a page full of negative space goes even further and drives users to an important element or feature on that page. Now, as web creators, it also focuses us to be more precise with the few details that do remain in the space. And as we've pointed out many times in our masterclasses, it's within the limitations that our creativity truly thrives. Now, Elemental's grid system of vertical sections and horizontal columns makes establishing this negative space for our page designs very simple and efficient. And the best way to do this is in the editor panel and under the advanced tab, use the margin and padding settings to create all the space we need around our elements. And this is also where we can make the adjustments we need to assure that our design looks just as good in responsive mode. Personally, and I could be wrong, but I think that this site follows a mobile-first design, which would explain why the images are relatively large in desktop view. True minimalists see negative space as equally important to design as the content, the images, the graphic elements, and the text. 
Now, when it comes to written content, we'll want to rely on as little as possible, keeping it to a slogan or two, lean but clever copy. With text being one of the very few elements left to dominate our negative space, it becomes far more valuable as a graphic element. Notice that minimalist designers explore and expand on the shapes and lines of the fonts, styling the letters themselves to convey the visual narrative or main idea of the site. We've seen many wonderful examples of this in the sites that our community members have created and designed. Examples where they have taken advantage of the topography and custom font options that we have examined and discussed in detail in previous masterclasses. And again, there'll be a link to that and more in the show notes below. Now, some minimalist designers prefer to go even further and create and upload their textual assets as actual images. Which brings us to our next essential characteristic of this style of design, to what many refer to as vivid imagery. Images are not a prerequisite of minimalist web design, but then again these days we'd have a hard time finding a site with no images at all. But when these sites do include images, they are so few and sparse that each one is meticulously selected. When handpicking the right image for our site, we want to consider every property of the image and ask ourselves, does it convey the main idea or emotion of our site? Does it convey it clearly? As for the style of the image itself, well, many believe that flat images or images without three-dimensional shading and lighting are a standard of minimalist design. But I'm sure that, just as much as I have, you've also come across some great examples of minimalist website design with skeuomorphic graphics that create the illusion of realistic three-dimensional objects. Now, once we found the perfect image, we can upload it and stylize it using Elemental CSS filters and blending options in the Image Widgets Style tab. Whether or not our hand-picked images are the most important elements of our page's design, maintaining a simple and very clear visual hierarchy is another essential characteristic of minimalist design. Both the vast negative space and the few elements that it envelopes already give us a head start. Many designers prefer to adopt the Nielsen Group's F-shape pattern, as it is a pattern that users tend to follow, beginning in the top left-hand corner of the screen, then scanning to the right, returning back to the left before moving a step down and repeating the left-to-right scanning movement, and so on. It allows us to give every one of our rarefied elements a chance to shine in the spotlight in accordance with its importance. Now, obviously, this type of design pattern is not recommended for content-heavy sites, but then again, if our site were content-heavy, it wouldn't be considered minimalist. Now, as you know, I personally prefer to work with the Navigator feature open whenever I create sites in Elementor. And I find that it is especially convenient when I am setting up or reorganizing the order of the sections and elements to further perfect the visual hierarchy of the design. Another reason for using the Navigator in Elementor is to assure symmetry, another essential characteristic of minimalist design. Symmetry promotes visual balance and order, making the visual hierarchy clearer. It also helps us to create a single focal point where we can place our main message or image. But most importantly, symmetry helps to ensure a better user experience. And there are several types of symmetry that we can rely on. Linear symmetry. Symmetry created along a vertical, horizontal, or even diagonal line. Radial symmetry. Symmetry that radiates from the center outwards in multiple directions. Approximate symmetry, when we create a sense of balance by relying on similar sizes or distances within the space, but without the objects appearing to be mirrored. And of course, asymmetry, or lack of symmetry. Again, all of this can be simply and accurately built along the grid when working in Elementor. Even when we're creating asymmetry, or what some refer to as broken grid design, we'll still need to use the grid to get our graphics and text elements aligned according to our design plan. By the way, a great pro trick to saving time and making sure that we're creating the symmetry that we are after is by duplicating sections, columns, widgets, etc., or by using the copy paste style option in the option menu to allocate the same exact attributes to another element without affecting the widget's content. 
There's a great misconception that monochrome is the most essential characteristic of minimalist design. And this is why we'll find people mistakenly labeling a site's design as minimalist just because it's all in black and white. So let's just burst that bubble and say that color is a characteristic of minimalist design, and that while a monochromatic design could be considered minimalistic, a minimalist design does not have to be monochromatic. Now, we could be using an image that could include many colors, so long as they work together in a way that conforms to a minimalist ideal. Traditionally, minimalist designs rely on a modest set of colors, usually two or three. Commonly, these colors form a subtle scheme with delicate contrasts among the colors of the few elements and a much less subtle contrast with the background color. Sometimes designers employ color fields, vast shapes of a single color to help create these contrasts, establishing and directing the user to the main areas of the page. A fashionable way to achieve this is by relying on less vivid, subdued colors, much like pastel colors, colors with a relatively high luminosity and low saturation. Now, as professional web creators, we'll be figuring out our color palette in the pre-planning stage before we even sit down to create our site with Elementor. However, as professional Elementor users, we know that there's a great deal of pre-planning that we can do in Elementor, especially when it comes to selecting default colors and setting up our color palette. Let's just go to the Elementor Editor panel and click on the menu icon, and in the options we'll click on the default colors. Let's select the pastel preset just because we mentioned it earlier, and now let's say the client wants us to use a color scheme with more blue, so we'll click on one of the new default colors, and in the color picker we'll use the hue slider to select another complementing or contrasting color with similar luminosity and saturation. Now, when we click on the plus symbol, we'll not only be adding it to the default colors, but we'll be adding it as a preset so that every time we need this color, it'll be right there in the color picker's favorites, making our workflow so much easier. The last essential characteristic on our list probably serves as a good guideline as to when we should turn to minimalism for our designs, and that is modernism. And now, I've met designers who claim that this is a bit like asking what came first, the chicken or the egg. Minimalism appeared in design around the same time during the last century that, as a society, we were getting very excited about new modern technology, TVs and time-saving household gadgets. So you could say that minimalism has its roots in the streamlined, almost surgically clean designs of the modern era that peaked in the 1950s and 60s. And it's precisely because minimalism became so synonymous with advanced, reliable technology that years later, industries revived this design trend to promote high-tech, advanced environmental technology, and modern office spaces, and so on. And this is probably why we rarely, if at all, see minimalism in designs for businesses and products that have tradition as its central concept, such as designs for a traditional family-run pizza restaurant, for example. This week, we reviewed minimalism, what the concept means as an artistic ideal, and how it manifests in web design. And if you're looking for inspiration and further material on minimalist design, we highly recommend checking out the links below, and of course, in the in-depth article that we released with this video. And if you would like to share minimalist designs and artists that have inspired you, perhaps a minimalist design of your own, then by all means, please share this in the comments below, along with any tips and advice that could help other users. And if you have any criticisms, we are equally interested in your thoughts. And if you enjoyed this masterclass and you found it helpful, insightful, or inspiring, make sure that you click on the subscribe button and tap that bell so that you don't miss out on our next masterclass. Because after all, our goal is to be the best at helping others excel at their craft. Thanks for watching. Cheers.